Let's bring you this now. The comments made by Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Popi Ramatuba, to a Zimbabwean patient are still drawing widespread reaction. International NGO Doctors Without Borders has also weighed in, slamming Ramatuba for remarks which they say drive xenophobic rhetoric across the country's health facilities. So, in a video that emerged this week, the health MEC can be seen berating the patient at Bilabila Bila Hospital for seeking health services in South Africa. Ramatuba said the patient should rather look to the Zimbabwean government for help as health services here are overburdened. The comments, as you can imagine, have sparked a charged debate. For more on this, let's speak to Doctors Without Borders, Musa Ntlobo, who joins us now via our video link this morning. Musa, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks very much indeed for uh, agreeing to speak to us. I mean, you know, I can already hear some of the MEC supporters saying she wasn't being xenophobic. She was merely stating facts. What's your response to that? Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me in your program. Um, in fact, <laughs> uh, you know, being xenophobic, uh, it, it, it's obvious, it obviously points to how you put things across. If uh, your statement is anti-migrants, um, uh, obviously that becomes uh, xenophobic. But uh, I don't want to, uh, to comment much on what the MEC said. Uh, about uh, the Zimbabweans. And um, what I need to put into record is uh, us as Doctors Without Borders, um, our mandate is very clear and straightforward. Our mandate is uh, to uh, assist those who are uh, not given an opportunity to access services, um, to access services as well as speak out if we are able to identify some uh, irregularities in terms of uh, uh, their human rights um, as well as uh, their access to health care. So uh, for us, if uh, they are excluded, if they are marginalized because of their vulnerability uh, by being uh, migrants, then we come in. We say in South Africa, based on the Constitution, uh, everyone in South Africa has a right to access health care. So if they are in South Africa, they need to access health care. So we need not to politicize uh, things. Uh, we need to uh, look at what is our mandate and what is uh, the mandate of the Department of Health in terms of the provision of uh, the health care to the people who are in South Africa. So we feel that um, if they are to be excluded for being uh, the migrants, it means uh, that we are becoming xenophobic in the way in which uh, we are treating uh, the, the migrants in South Africa. Mm. What has been interesting is that over this past week, as this debate has continued, um, it's now emerged that South African health facilities or health workers are actually not required to document how many foreign nationals they treat. And so it becomes difficult, statistically speaking, to prove whether or not our country's system is overburdened by foreign nationals or by many other issues, including mismanagement. I wonder in the context of that how we should view what the MEC has said or just view generally how people feel about people from outside the country coming to South Africa for medical assistance. When you are to make a case, uh, you need to bring forward the evidence. Without uh, being able to document and have an accurate data that points out to uh, the challenge that is brought by the migrants into South African health system. Uh, you, you cannot really, uh, you know, um, be vocal and say uh, they are bringing strain because you need to be able to measure how much strain uh, does migrants brings into South African health system. If you are not documenting that, it, it becomes difficult. So um, what we are saying is uh, what needs to be tabled is the evidence and then propose the solutions that need uh, to be uh, put into place. Uh, instead of, uh, uh, you know, isolating them from uh, accessing the services. Because if they do not get health care whilst they are in South Africa, take, for instance, if uh, there are infectious diseases that uh, some people are having who are not being seen, what is going to happen to the entire, uh, you know, uh, system, uh, or health system in South Africa? And what's going to happen to the entire uh, community in South Africa if, they do not get, uh, you know, that kind of attention or that kind of health-seeking behavior is blocked from the health facilities. So that becomes a huge problem. Yeah. It's Section 27 of the Constitution that speaks about everyone having a right to health care services, and it doesn't discriminate uh, around nationality. But 
Do you reckon there's enough guidance about how doctors should respond to scenarios where there are limited resources and you need to make sure that you prioritize the right people? So let's say we're dealing with a scenario here where there are two individuals who are both, for argument's sake, not emergency cases, but you simply don't have the resources to treat both of them. Should something like their nationality guide which of these patients you prioritize? In, in this case, uh, if these are the people who can be treated on the PhD level, where we are not seeing much of the problem when migrants are, are going to the facilities that provide primary health care, they must go there and they can be uh, treated. There is no problem with that. The problem is when they have to seek for, uh, you know, uh, health care in the tertiary and the secondary level. That's where the problem is. So uh, you, I, I think a patient cannot be, you know, um, referred to a secondary or tertiary level if that doesn't need an attention uh, at, at that level. So uh, I do not understand what could be the possibilities that could, uh, you know, block the people from going there or being turned back without getting any kind of a healthcare assistance that they are seeking. Mm. We do know that migration or immigration issues are not unique to South Africa. From the work that you've been able to do, how much of a strain are people's movement through borders affecting or, or placing on different health systems? Uh, this is, I, I, I think, a global problem because uh, you go to Europe, you experience the same kind of treatment uh, for migrants. Uh, what's different, just to be specific, in South Africa? The migrants that we are having in South Africa are the migrants that are integrated into the system. We do not have, um, uh, you know, um, the refugee camps where people can be taken to and the attention uh, could be given to those people who are kept in those camps. So once people are inside the borders of South Africa, they should have, you know, um, the same kind of attention because they are all human beings. Uh, you know, for the sake of being migrant, it doesn't move away the reality that uh, you are a human being. Uh, you, as a human being, you also need to get a, a health care assistant if uh, the, the, the need arises or if uh, you have a problem with your health. So uh, it's something that is happening, uh, you know, uh, everywhere in, in, in the country, uh, not in the country, uh, in the world. They are experiencing same kind of a problem where they are excluded from the access to services. That's where we come in as Doctors Without Borders. Because for us, as the medical human, humanitarian organization, we are for everyone who, ex ex who is excluded to access services, healthcare and hu uh, humanitarian services, wherever they are, regardless of where they come from or who they are. Loud and clear. Thank you so much indeed for weighing in on this discussion.